Hi, thanks for tuning in to Fledgling Farmer, where I pursue old fashioned living and a natural lifestyle. And it has been a great pleasure to take the last several months here and create this video. It will take you from beginning to where I am now of my fledgling attempt at a garden to feed my family. And through these months, we have had many, many trials, many surprises. And in, in looking back and putting together all these pieces, it really has actually encouraged me because I have learned through this homestead and farm journey that there's a lot of failure and a lot of discouragement and so many opportunities to quit and throw in the towel and yet I'm still plugging away one foot in front of the other. And it has been a blessing to see really how far I have come and the accomplishment of my garden. And it's been a pleasure. So I thoroughly hope you enjoy it. Please watch it all the way to the end because from my first planting to now, it's just, it's mind boggling. And so much anxiety trying not to mess up and the garden isn't forgiving but yet has been forgiving for me in many many ways and I'm just super grateful for the influencers and the books and the podcasts and stuff that have helped train me up through this process since this isn't the world I came from but yet it is the world that I am pursuing so thank you so much for joining me and enjoy the video all right, here is my hugel bed. So it is still winter in this video and Scott had trimmed up or cut down several trees in our in our woods and we brought the the trunks and the limbs and we began our hugel bed and the idea is to put the larger matter on the bottom and stack it kind of like a lasagna. So you put your big logs followed by your smaller twigs on top and then you cover it with grass or any other green material that you might have, some soil, and then the very top layer, he keeps getting my anklet, the very top layer is going to be that hay straw that I have. I'm gonna cover up with the tarp and let it sit for a full year before I'll be able to access it. Um, so it's a lot of work. It's a cool day, but we are getting her done. So, and little Benjamin's running around with me. So I stop from time to time to play with him and entertain him. my chickens we got the hay straw and we piled it on top and the chickens are having a ball uh, Benjamin's having a ball um, but yeah so our work continues we're gonna lay as much hay down as we can and then tarp it I am going to do a screen recording of where you can find some more information on the science behind hugel beds uh, but yeah, if you just go on Google and type in Hugel, H-U-G-E-L bed, you'll see a ton of information on it. Like I said, this is my first shot at it, but the concept seems good. I know a lot of people too with uh, raised planter beds, what they'll do is they'll, um, on the very bottom of their planter bed, they'll put large material like logs and twigs and leaves and stuff in order to, to save on the cost of dirt. So there it is. For me, homesteading is more than providing food and um, a lifestyle for my husband and I, but it's also to share in the blessing of raising our family. Now, these are two boys that I nanny, um, so they aren't mine by flesh and blood, but they certainly have my heart, and it has been a great honor and privilege to love and help their parents raise them up in um, a, just a safe, nurturing environment and giving them the experience of the outdoors and of growing things and of raising animals up. And so 
Here's just a little bit of montage of what has occupied many of my hours and days and has interrupted my projects around the homestead here. But I am learning slowly but surely that these are sweet interruptions and not to allow them to overwhelm me. So please enjoy this sweet little montage of what life looks like, um, even on the inside of a homestead. And uh, yeah, enjoy. So here's props to my bread making journey. I was so proud of this little loaf because it wasn't flat and dense and heavy. It actually did what it was supposed to do. Let me say bread making has not been as easy as I thought. Usually things come easy to me, but this definitely has had a challenge. So I was very proud in this moment and I'm just kind of flexing my muscles here. Uh, since this loaf, I've made several other loaves that have been just as good and not so good, but the journey still continues. between the two gardens. I had started a garden prior to us moving in and then I had started a separate garden closer to the barn right after we had moved in last year. And this is the gap between the two. I'm trying to unify this into, I think it's about a 1500 square foot garden. So I am a huge fan of the no dig garden. It does take time and advanced planning, but um, it's, to me, it is a lazy man's way, but it's definitely effective. But you simply cut down the grass as low as you can. I laid a ton of cardboard on top of it. Um, I ordered this topsoil to be delivered. I'm going to spread it out, and then over the coming season, we will apply our compost pile to it. Now, there's not going to be a whole lot of nutrients in this soil because it is really just a topsoil. Um, but over time, it really is going to be a healthy little plot of land with the clay soil underneath and mixing all that in. And then, um, over time applying our compost pile to it. So there's a picture connecting the two gardens and I'm really excited on what is to come. We have added two new, or sorry, 10 hens to our flock of ladies, and this is the brood box that they're going to be going into. So they're going to transition from inside the house into this area, and what I'm doing is I'm taking um, a solution of vinegar and water, and I am disinfecting this brood box, so it's going to be a nice, happy, clean place for them to live. So the weather has not been kind this spring and has made it really difficult to plan on when I can take my seedlings that I have grown um, inside and made plant starts and putting them outside. Well, the weather really actually still isn't cooperating, but I am about to leave for almost 10 days to um, Arizona and Hawaii for my sister's wedding, and I have to get this stuff into the ground. So 
This is a mad dash 12 hour day of getting all of my seed starts into the ground um, and just hoping that uh, they will make it while I am away. And as always, my little sidekick. <laughs> two months since I have planted my seedlings into the ground and you can see the difference between last year's healthy garden and this year's just topsoil no dig garden. Um, the plants are quite scrawny over there because there's really not a whole lot of nutrients but I stuck them in the ground anyways kind of like a test thing but I really didn't have room nor time to really devote to them. So oh this is a rogue pumpkin slash squash not quite sure yet plant um, that I was pleased to see uh, popping up kind of did its own thing without any help but anyways I'm starting this trellising system so what I'm doing here is I'm showing you this metal wire that I have attached between T posts at the end of each row of my peppers and tomatoes and several influences on YouTube have done this trellising system where they take string they drape it over a wire and then they make two main runners off of their tomato and pepper plants and they tie them to these strings as a trellis. So here, what I'm doing is I'm taking, I've got some green twine and some brown twine and I'm cutting them to measure, I mean, cutting them to length and I am using landscape staples um, and you can see I'm tying a knot to one end. I'm going to put it on one side of the plant. I am going to take the string up over the wire above, and then I am going to bring the other end down and attach another landscape staple to the other side and put it in the ground. And so the idea is now I've got two strings that are trellised and the plant is going to have um, two main stems that are going to be trained up on this string. And what I'm hoping is that this is going to really cut down on pests. It's going to keep the plant off of the ground um, where water can splash back up on it because I know you know, just like with leaf rot, that type of thing. And um, also it allows air to go through the plants um, and just kind of makes it healthy all the way around. So I'm trying to demonstrate this from various angles so you can get a, a true idea of, of really what I'm doing. It's not real easy to film this by yourself, um, but I'm really pleased with the results. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go down my rows, um, put these um, strings, attach these strings, and then I bought some clear um, or some plastic clips that I'm going to clip each plant to the string and train it to go up. And then also allow support um, for the plant. The hard thing through this project is you have to trim down your plants and I sometimes feel like a plant killer or torturer um, because these plants look so good and you'll see I'm going to be cutting off a lot of healthy leaves and limbs but I want to have a good thick stalk coming from the ground up and I want to do that V with the plant so one section of the V can go up on one side and, and the other section of the V can go on the other but here I'm just so sad because I literally cut that off the plant and there's peppers and flowers and it just looks so good but I'm hoping that the sacrifice of pruning the plant is going to be beneficial for it in the long run and produce a, a, a better yield for our family.
And here is the final step in my project. So I got these clips off of Amazon. These are the white things that you see on the stems kind of attached to the string. And you, you, I'm sure, have the general idea. I'll be adding clips as the plants mature and it will support the fruits and vegetables um, as, they, as they grow. Um, so that's the idea. But here is the latest and greatest video on the progress of the garden. So you'll kind of see some sprouts here where I planted sunflower seeds and corn seeds and you can kind of see some of the sprouts coming along. Um, but yeah, so you just witnessed quite a lengthy journey from I would say about January to June. I appreciate you coming along with me and being patient with me as I've navigated through life and um, gotten uh, gotten on track with my garden and updates and all of that good stuff. So enjoy this uh, this updated um, updated glimpse of my garden.